Greetings, fellow humans. Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards, and today we're taking a look at a keyboard I've been waiting for for a minute since Keychron started the V series. The V3 is basically the value version of the Keychron Q3. Now, this is a gasket mounted aluminum kit that's a lot pricier, but this is the value version of it. It is not a gasket mount and it is made out of plastic. So today we're going to take a look at the value version of the Q3 from Keychron. So first we'll go with the unboxing. I do apologize. I've been, I've been under the weather so I'm not, not quite myself but I'll do the best that I can to share what we've got. As always with Keychron, we've got our quick start guide that shows us our layout, how we can change from Mac to Windows mode and what those keys do, as well as a quick tutorial. As always, I have picked up the bare bone version. I'm not necessarily a fan of Keychron's uh, keycaps, so plus uh, their choices of switch are usually fairly limited so as always they include this card just remind you to keep those pins straight and I do it for every pin every switch before I put it in I double check to make sure the legs are straight don't want messing up that socket unless you like pulling out that solder iron so before we take a look at the keyboard I just want to see what comes in the box um, with the pricier version, we got a nicer cable, but this is still a decent cable. Um, still, Keychron, you guys have had to watch one of my videos for now. Why don't you put a tail on this adapter? It's a C to C cable with an a C to A adapter. As soon as somebody loses that, come on. Make, if you're gonna include the cable, at least make it useful. Just put a little tail on there. Got a nice wire uh, puller and I guess, huh, I guess we didn't get a switch puller in this one. Not that their switch puller is anything special. It's usually a, the horseshoe type one and it's usually very skinny. So it looks like we've got a couple of spare screws for both the plate and for the case, as well as a tool for each as well. And as always, we have a decent sized um, manual that comes in several languages that explains the processes, especially if you wanna uh, load up and uh, mess with QMK for box. And now what we have is a very nice uh, TKL with a knob. I actually like it in that spot. I know some people are like, oh, but the other buttons are in the way. It's like, I just still kind of use it as a button either press or, I don't know, it works for me. Um, I mean, but I could understand how it could, you know, for some people they prefer it over here. And I, I get that because you do have more clearance. So um, we have a, nicely built board we've got screw and stabs they have applied some some uh, lubricant looks like some grease and they just did it pretty uh not i wouldn't say sloppy there's just a good amount of it on there there's your reset button when you want to go into bootloader mode to load up q and k these stabilizers are pretty good i've these may not be palm these may just be the regular plastic but i've seen stabilizers now coming with palm stems inside of the housing um we have a very very nice kit nice profile just uh, this is the profile of the q3 and this is the profile of the v3 so you can see it is thinner it's not quite as tall as it's big brother. So right off the bat, it's clear to see that we have a very nice design. Now somebody did ask, I do believe that USB is on the PCB. I, I believe on the Q3, it is a tiny little daughter board. Um, there may be the possibility of doing a burger mount, but I'll be getting into it 
some other time. Today I just wanted to take a quick look at it, share it, because I know that it, it was just released. There's very little about this keyboard out there. I wanted to go ahead and just give some nerd stats so that you know everybody knows. So the front chin of this keyboard sits at 22 millimeters from the surface, while the back height uh, standard is 30 millimeters. So standing without any feet, just standing on its own or sitting on its own, you got 30, uh, 30 millimeters at the back, the six degree typing angle. Now you do have two sets of feet. If you pull out a smaller feet, you're going to increase your back height to 38 millimeters and your typing angle to 10 degrees. And if you pull out the final or the largest legs, you're going to go up to 13 degrees typing angle with a back height of 44 millimeters. So let's go ahead and plug up and see what this pretty little lady does with some RGB. All right, so as is pretty much the case with Keychrons, especially in the last year or so, the RGBs are very clear and they're bright. I mean, they're obviously, I think they do come stock at full brightness, but I've got a, light, a lot of lights on in here and it's, it's quite, quite bright. So um, those RGB lovers, you're gonna be happy. It's to the south, uh, but you know, you're still gonna get some glow from underneath. So it looks quite, quite nice. I mean, this is a, quite a nice deal. For someone getting into the hobby, when I got into the hobby, there were not, there weren't choices like this. I mean, uh, the budget choices, you know, for enthusiast level keyboards uh, was basically considered the GMMK Pro. And I mean, that, that thing is, it's not the best keyboard. But for what you have nowadays, uh, it's just, uh, I think the, the price to value comparison is amazing. So we've got this thing stock. I'm gonna keep it stock. I'm gonna go ahead and load up some, some switches. I do have some other switches on the way. And I had a 3D print going because I didn't expect this to arrive until tomorrow. But I wanted to go ahead and get a video out real quick. I'm gonna come back to it. I've got quite a few uh, projects, not only for this V, but for the other Vs. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and make it fun. So right now I'm gonna load it up with some lubed Akko green matcha switches that are always a good linear. Uh, they're not the thock yes, but they do deliver a nice deeper tone, I believe. So I'm gonna go ahead and unplug her so I'm not triggering a pause or anything during my recording session and go ahead and load these puppies up. Well, here she is loaded up. I just wanted to go ahead and see what the RGB's on. It's one thing I love about these switches. I mean, they can let some of their color come through but they basically just enhance the color that they are because of the window so even with the switches you see i mean they're tiny windows the rgb is still quite nice all right so for keycaps today i also don't have many unused keycap sets and this one is one that's actually just been oh, sitting around for a bit um it is a very simple die sub uh, a clone of the Red Samurai. So I thought that it would look good for this. And I mean, they're thick enough. I think they're 1.3 when I measured them. So I think these are gonna work just just nicely uh, to do just, like I said, we're just doing a stock style test and because we don't have the Keychron parts, we're just using, well, off my shelf parts. So let's go ahead and load up the Red Samurai. Eh? Well, and here we are. Here is the V3 loaded up with some Akko matcha greens and 
some PBT die subs, some fairly thick PBT uh, die sub uh, samurai keys. Um, just give it a little bit of light. Let's see what she looks like. Yeah, as you can see, the light's still coming through. But, I mean, this is for a stock keyboard, just loading up some switches. I mean, I didn't even put a drop on the stabilizers. Now, they're not perfect, no. By no means are they perfect. That was just me switching up. But, they're pretty good. So, I'm going to come back to this in a little bit, wait for this print to be over so I can actually do a proper sound test. Um, this was just a quick unboxing and a stock, but I am, like I said, I've got several projects for these keyboards since they're so similar. I kind of want to try different things on each one and see what kind of sounds that I can get out of with the different materials and just different ways of doing things, that's all. So, uh, of course, this is available without the knob. Um, I, I did get this, I bought this from Keychron uh, directly and I, I'll put the price down below because at the moment I, I just, I can't remember, a lot of things been going on. This keyboard showing up was like, oh, that's right, keyboards. So anyway, I'm gonna leave you guys with a stock sound test of this keyboard. And if you have any questions, any comments, any things you'd like to take a look at when I do come back to it and I open her up and we look at the, you know possible mods that we can do to you know bring out some more sound because I mean she she sounds nice but this big pad of silicone that's in there that all these V series have they do a nice job of adding some heft to it but they also seem to mute some of the noise so bringing out some of that noise is probably what I'm going to aim for but until the next transmission keep calm keyboard on and enjoy the sound test